I enjoy Facebook for a about one reason, and said reason is a, 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 a private group, and it's called, I have to actually read it because it's so long. I'm not reading all that, but I'm happy for you or sorry that happened. Now, most of the time, this is a bunch of Bible thumping freaks, right? What else is Facebook? Sometimes there's some really funny shit, and sometimes there's um, a lot of bigots <laughs> and misogynists. There's a post that's been uh, put in this group only about like 400 times. It's this like, I'm calling it a book because it's long as shit. It's this quite literal pamphlet from a church called the Word of Faith Fellowship. Now I did about one second of research and this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Now you would be an absolute fool um, if you thought that I was gonna read any of these to begin with, and I'm not. This Christian church is telling everybody not to celebrate Easter and Christmas. Word of Faith Fellowship is a cult in Spindale, North Carolina. Now listen, as soon as you get recognized as a cult by like Wikipedia and the general public, and you haven't committed mass genocide, there's probably an issue. Lady B, I be feeding cats! Word of Faith Fellowship began in 1979 when Jane Whaley and her husband, Sam Whaley, converted a former steakhouse into a chapel. Imagine a world where Longhorns goes out of business and somebody buys it and turns it into a cult because that's the world we're living in whether you like it or not. She was a math teacher and he sold used cars. This is why all members must get approval from Sam before buying or selling any vehicles. Could you like not be in my air, you stink tank? Jane Whaley, the daughter of a plumber and a homemaker who had two brothers in rural North Carolina, led the group as it grew from a few people to 750. Though Jane Whaley had no formal training in ministry, she was described as a compelling speaker and leader, much like Jim Jones. Like when over 400 cultists who believed in everything that Jim Jones said took their own lives. And there's no red flags flying up. I mean, the Whaley student from Rima Bible College, Brooke Covington, is a minister in the church. So that was just the first paragraph. We're already like strapped into a ride that we didn't ask to be on, okay? If in your first paragraph you are described as Jim Jones and you converted a steakhouse into a chapel, it's like, have you guys seen that picture of the Pizza Hut that got turned into a church? I, I understand that this is kind of distracting. I, I can't move her. I am absolutely skipping over all of this. Spanish stuff. Um, basically in 88, they opened another f***ing church in Brazil. On April 27th of 2020, an attorney for the church confirmed three members have died of c <laughs> can't say that word on the internet. <laughs> and that it was not known how many times, and it was, and, and f and that it was not known how many had the virus, though the church claimed to be 100% compliant with guidelines for the virus. Because Ruther Rutherford County, I can't even pronounce the American ones, had over 100 cases, a very high number for the population. Some people blame the church, which was receiving threats of violence. Look, she's grabbing my thumb. Don't send death threats. Don't send violence threats. Don't send bomb threats. Don't Just don't send f***ing threats to people, okay? I don't care how much you don't agree with what the hell they're doing. Just don't. She's feeding the stray cats! A 2012 Charlotte Observer article described worship at Word of Faith as ecstatic. Sometimes members hop. <laughs> Can you imagine just like rolling up to church and just having you a good old time? And there's just somebody hopping around like a stupid little frog. Sometimes they speak in tongues. The music and prayer booms through the sanctuary. <laughs> Jane Whaley said, God has freed us to be loud. Children are isolated. That doesn't sound very friendly. Children are isolated, monitored, and controlled closely by the church, being educated in the church-controlled school, and preventing from, and prevent, and prevent, I can't read today, and prevented from watching television under threat of punishment. Now, I, 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 I'm gonna be the person who gets made fun of for a minute here. I used to think Jehovah's Witnesses were a cult. I'm being serious too, this is not a joke. And if you're a Jehovah, I'm so sorry. I used to think Jehovah's Witnesses were cults and I worked with two of them who went to the same church and I was thrown back. I was slingshotted to God, to Jehovah, to witness the fact that both of them had seen Squid Game. I thought they weren't allowed to watch TV for some reason or drink alcohol and then realized that I think that's the Mormons. I don't really think the Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses are like a cult. I consider cults more like Heaven's Gate. Must acknowledge 
my father. My father is not a human father. My father is a member of the evolutionary level above human, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Where he just f***ing told them all to wear some Nikes and acided their pudding or whatever. Nonetheless, children are told to display a positive attitude regardless of how they feel. And a song sung within the church has the word, Happy, 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 happy are the children whose God is the Lord. This is mildly frightening. Similarly, adults are required to smile on command as a condition of membership. Now I know I'm gonna have one dumb motherfucker come up in my comment section and be like, I don't see a problem with this. They're just worshiping God. If any church, church, requires you to smile on command as a rule, as a rule of membership, don't be, don't be the stop. Be rules. This sh is insane. This is the thing that I saw in the in the in the post on Facebook. Rules is a whole section. I'll read the bottom first. The entire list is 145 entries long. Now that would be one thing if we didn't have the stupidest rules to ever exist. There are 145 rules on the don't list. They have a do's and don'ts list. The don'ts is 145. The do's, I think, was about eight. Followers do not celebrate birthdays and religious or secular holidays, including Christmas and Easter, because they are pagan. Okay. Christmas and Easter are not pagan holidays. The way that the pagan holidays works is on the wheel of the year. Um, there's eight holidays. Easter falls around Ostera. They sound the same, but are not remotely the same. Christmas is just out of the fucking picture. I guess would more be around the time of Yule, which I is a very depressing, sad holiday. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Congregants do not watch television and movies, read newspapers, or eat in restaurants that serve alcohol. So every restaurant ever- Men and women must swim with shirts covering their upper bodies and cannot take them off in public, not even in their own backyards. Men cannot grow beards. Well, everybody just throw out the f***ing row game. Followers are not allowed to enroll in college without permission, and if permission is granted, can only attend alongside other members so their behavior can be monitored. Whaley also picks their majors and they must work for the church or a business owned by the church leaders once they leave school. At that point, what in the f is the point of going to college? Some of these are just like fucking dumb, like the first one. The college thing is so weird to me. It's out of this world. So there is another part of um this Wikipedia page. No, 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 no. We're not done. Abuse allegations. Beating the cats! Stop beating! With all good cults comes a good beating. Although a number of critics and former members have described the church as a cult and accused the church of abuse, these accusations are disputed by current members and church officials who claim that through strong prayer, church fellowship, biblical teaching, and encouraging community lives ultimately change. That's the fucking definition of a cult. In 1995, Jane and Sam Whaley denied allegations made by several former members on the TV program Inside Edition. One former student said he had been beaten multiple times by church members to remove a destructive spirit. Other former members described sitting in a prayer chair, sitting in a, yeah, I read that right, sitting in a prayer chair as former members walked around them shouting prayer. The prayer chair, everybody. It's the prayer chair. The church was investigated by the SBI in the 1990s for child abuse after more than 40 former members told the Forest City Daily Courier and other news outlets what they believed had happened there. No charges resulted. In the year 2000, a woman testifying in a child custody case said her one-year-old son was subjected to blasting or standing in a circle and loudly praying, sometimes for hours, in order to drive out demons. She also said her son was beaten enough to cause bruises. Jane Whaley, asked about discipline at her church, said God wanted children to be beaten if that was necessary. Whaley cited Acts 2-2. Is that how you even say that? Acts 2-2, two, two, Acts 2-2. Two, two. Whaley cited Acts 2-2 two, two to justify disciplinary practices, members said. Now, here's the problem with that. That's, it's, 
is definitely one of those gays of sin types of deals uh, where they took one little part of the Bible and was like, hey, maybe I can like make up some bullshit and see if people believe me because here's what Acts 2-2 entails. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. That's it. That, that, that's Acts 2-2. That's it. She used this as a way to, um, abuse children. Violent winds of God. Sky farts. Jane Whaley was convicted of a misdemeanor assault in 2004 as a result of an incident two years earlier where former member Lacey Ween described blasting by a group of, she really calls it blasting too, that by a group of members followed by the assault of Whaley. Ween was suing the church for $2.5 in a separate case. After five years of appeals, the conviction was overturned. Another former member, Michael Lowry, claimed to have been beaten and held prisoner in 2011 to drive out gay demons. Former member Jamie Anderson said he joined the church at age four. Many former members described his treatment as some of the harshest anyone has suffered. Anderson said he was frequently sent to a storage area called the Green Room, and one former member said he was brutally paddled after incidents where other children told on him for the most minor offenses in school. Anderson said when his grandfather died, he was not allowed to attend the funeral and left out of the obituary. He also said he was forced to work, and that in 2002, he and four other boys were punished by being put in a room by themselves to watch Whaley on video during school and restricted to his home outside of school. I'm shocked the fucker hasn't died yet. Like, they haven't killed about 2,000 people. The investigation also included numerous documents and recordings of Whaley made without her knowledge. Whaley denied abuse took place and defended certain practices as being protected by the First Amendment. I think we should read the First Amendment really quick too because this bitch really likes to just cover everything up. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution prevents the government from making laws that regulate an establishment of religion or that prohibit the free exercise of religion or abridge the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, assembly, the right to petition, or, oh wait, or the right to petition the government for redress of grievances. It was adopted on December 15th, 1791 as one of the Ten Amendments, I almost said commandments, that constitute the Bill of Rights. The Matthew Fenner case. Stop beating the car! This is under abuse allegations. In 2017, Matthew Fenner testified that after he and his family joined the church in 2010, he witnessed members being shouted at for hours to remove demons. In January of 2013, Fenner was allegedly beaten for two hours to break me free from the homosexual demons, he said in a police affidavit. He said he escaped to the home of his grandparents who reported the incident to law enforcement. Fenner tried and failed to get law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, to pursue the case. Because Fenner persevered, five church members were indicted on December 2014 and charged with kidnapping and assault. Fenner and his girlfriend at the time of the alleged incident, Daniel Cordes, testified in the trial. If I wasn't reading about Brazil, one person was going to be of Hispanic descent and have a name that I can't f***ing pronounce. In May of 2017, Brooke Cummington, with whom Fenner lived with before his escape, became the first Word of Faith member to go on trial. Because the jury foreman shared documents that were not supposed to be made public, Superior Court Judge Gary Gavinus, Gavinus, Gavinus declared a mistrial and a new trial was scheduled for September 11th of 2017. Robert Walker was scheduled to appear in court in October, but his case and those of Sarah Anderson, Adam Bartley, and Justin Covington were moved to January 2018. Now here's the part of the video where I might get taken off of YouTube, and you know what? I don't give a shit because I'm still losing subscribers. Um, f this entire platform. A month later, on June 19th of 2017, Matthew Fenner's grandfather, Robert Marvin Rape, that was his real last name, was found dead in his yard from a gunshot wound to the chest with the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation's assistance. District Attorney Ted Bell determined the death was suicide. So this isn't a great group of people, but what I love is how that was under abuse allegations other charges. No! Beat of the straight catch!
I do want everybody to know that A&E was about to publish a documentary called The Devil Next Door about this cult. And somehow, these people just bulldozed their way into A&E's headquarters and got this shit stopped. And they were like, well, you hired paid actors to say bad mean shit about us. Anyways, I just thought I would mention that little tidbit. Uh, let's read other charges. On May 11th of 2018, Jerry Gross, these people have the funniest names in the world, and his son Jason Lee Gross were charged in U.S. District Court. The U.S.'s attorney's office claimed that their business received $150,000 between 2009 and 2013 by claiming they had laid off employees who, as a result, became eligible for unemployment benefits when in fact the employees continued to work at the business. The Associated Press found six cases of companies allegedly making fraudulent unemployment claims in which many of the company's employees belonged to the Word of Faith. Jerry Gross and Jason Gross played guilty to wire fraud on May 25th. Why is it Joel Olstein uh, this fucking fit? What is it with these Christian <laughs> places getting involved in all this fraud? Minister Kent Covington was sentenced to 34 months in prison in April. April 2019 for conspiracy to commit mail fraud. The church has not been implicated in any of these charges. Can we please fucking get these people on something? Nobody got in trouble for child abuse. Nobody got in trouble for the fraud. Nobody got in trouble for beating the shit out of old people. Nobody got in trouble for this guy shooting himself in his backyard, which I guess you can't really get in trouble for causing somebody suicide. Actually, you can. You can get arrested for manslaughter. Nobody's been arrested for manslaughter. No! Don't be the guy. Now, let's read their, um... Their little pamphlet. I'm just excited to read this. This is such a treat, guys. Welcome to the Word of Faith Fellowship. <laughs> She's too happy up at the title. Let us take this opportunity to thank you for considering membership in Word of Faith Fellowship. Jane Whaley approved of your membership and asked that you be given this new member handout. In this handout, we will list a few of the very important rules. Do's and don'ts. This is ridiculous guys oh I, and I, I gave her a little bit too much right i i said that there were about eight dues there's five your enjoyment of your time with us will mainly be determined on how well you can keep these rules now i don't know how anybody's supposed to remember these and i don't know how anybody's supposed to like get called out on half of these but here we go also there's a person in the comments who said definitely a real place in 10 minutes from my house don't drive up to it there are guards what is it a fucking fortress okay here's their dues number one you will be required to attend every service. If for some reason, unforeseen at this time, you miss a service, you will be required to listen to the tape at the church. Death, severe illness, and surgery may be considered excused absences. May be considered. Imagine having a heart attack, which would be, like, severe illness, right? And then having to go and have open heart surgery, which would be considered surgery. And during that time, your mom dies. What the fuck do you do then? What do you do then? Those are three excused absences in one. Watch her not excuse it either. Two, you will be required to tithe 10% of your gross earnings and give offerings. This dumb bitch is asking for 10% of these people's revenue, that like personal income, not on top of other donations. <laughs> Jane will check your records from time to time. That's scary. Number three, you will be required to smile on command. This is called keeping your happy face. I can't even smile on command. Four, you will be required to participate in group work projects. Enjoy it. We have a need of many skills. Number five, after each service, you will be required to clean the church and fellowship hall on a rotating basis. We're gonna hear about this fucking steakhouse in the news one day. You already know it. They probably have like the bodies of children in the cement of the church, right? Here's the don't. We're going through all 145 of them, right? And I'm not gonna do numbers. I'm just going for it. They're short enough. Don't drink alcohol. Don't cook with alcohol. Don't eat at places that serve alcohol. Don't drink root beer. Don't drink cheer wine, which I, they put the trademark in the rule pamphlet. What the hell is cheer wine? Don't drink diet cheer wine. So this implicates that someone found a loophole, right? <laughs> and said, 
Oh, well, you said that I can't drink cheer wine. You didn't say anything about diet cheer wine. That shit's so funny. Don't drink ginger ale. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't dip snuff. Don't use chew tobacco. Don't associate willingly with those that do use tobacco. Don't watch movies unless Jane gives approval. Don't watch videos in your cars with an exclamation point, which means that she got so fucking mad about somebody, like, kicking back and watching YouTube in their van that she had to write it that instant. She probably, like, like, ran off new handouts and was like, I saw everybody at the church today. I don't know why she's British. She's from North Carolina. I saw everybody in church this morning, probably on time, except for Jeremy, who's sitting in the back third row at the very end. Everybody beat the shit out of him after service, but he was watching YouTube on his cellular device. So no more doing that. I've run off for more rules. Like, what? 14. Don't enter a movie theater unless Jane gives approval. Don't read newspapers, not even the headlines. Now, th that that's... Someone's gonna wind up dead, and it's probably going to be a law enforcement officer. Or the entire congregation in a mass suicide. Don't listen to the radio. Don't read or handle magazines, which I'm not too... Sure? About what handling magazines means, but okay. Don't watch television except when allowed at church. Don't read books that are not approved by leadership. Don't read your Bible too much. Can you read religious texts too much? Don't take notes during the service. Don't forget to go to the bathroom before the service. And then there's a, a second rule to this, right? Don't get up and go to the bathroom during a service. <laughs> Don't bring knives of any type on church property. We're forgetting one of Jane's little amendments here. The second amendment to the United States Constitution protects the right to keep and bear arms. Especially in North Carolina. I ain't never seen more places that will let you have a gun or a knife or a scalpel is in the southeast united states you will see people pack in in a church at your grandma's house at a family function at a baby shower don't be late for a service of function don't park alongside the left side of the sanctuary unless you are approved don't park in the spaces closest to the back steps they are reserved for parents with infants don't park in the first spot along the front sidewalk it's reserved for those on watch Don't park along the street. Use the field only when it's not raining. Don't park on the drive. Don't park. Don't park fucking anywhere. Walk to church. Don't drive your car with expired tags. You will be reminded. The men's dress code is don't wear a color of dress shirt except for white or light blue. Now this shit's just funny because she puts it in the most passive aggressive way. Women, don't get your heart set on a dress until you check with others to see if anyone else has that dress. You may need to return yours. Don't look around at others when you're supposed to be singing. I'm sorry, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> now this is just insane to me. I don't fucking know what this means. Don't close your eyes when singing. You could give over to a religious devil. Don't stare at visitors. Don't bring your cell phone into a service. Exceptions are rare and you will be told when you can bring your phone into the service. What the fuck is the exception to bringing your cell phone into a service, Kahoot? Don't bring visitors unless you tell someone in the office so they can tell Jane. In my opinion, in my general opinion, I don't like church. I just don't. I'm not a social person. I don't like speaking with others. I definitely don't like singing around other people. I don't like having to get dressed up to go do anything. I just don't like church. It's a bad experience. Church very quickly becomes a cult when you're not allowed to bring visitors. I thought like a, a church's main goal was to like give money to Honduras and like get some asses and some seats. And you're just like not allowed to bring a friend unless you go to Jane first. Don't put large amounts of cash in the offering unless it is in an envelope. Don't complain when the offering plates are passed more than once. I sure as hell would complain because you know she's expecting money to go in that damn plate every time it's sent over to you. Don't bring snacks of dark drinks or chocolate. We're almost halfway there. Don't chew gum in the sanctuary. Don't fall asleep during the services. If you get tired, take your Bible and stand up in the back of the sanctuary. <laughs> Don't wear muddy shoes or boots into the sanctuary. Leave them at the door outside.
Don't leave your tissues after services. Place them in the trash. Don't leave coats, Bibles, or personal belongings in the sanctuary. It gets locked after each service. Don't touch the thermos. <laughs> Don't wear or own anything with Nike on it. Nothing. Don't wear high-cut boot-like tennis shoes. Men, don't wear solid white tennis shoes. Why men? Why men? 73, don't go swimming with boys and girls together. Men, don't allow facial hair to grow. No beards of any type. No pork chop sideburn. Don't let your hair get long. Don't interview for a job unless it is under authority. Don't accept a job unless you check it out with authority. Don't make plans for college unless you have Jane check it out. Don't sign up for classes unless Jane Whaley or leadership checks out your schedule. What the hell happens if you're not allowed to, like, do science class because it's against the rules of God and you just can't graduate high school now? I don't know who died and made Jane God either because... Apparently, she has the biggest say-so in everything. Don't buy a house unless Jane Whaley can check it out. Don't even make an offer for a house unless Jane can check out and get a feel for the neighborhood. Don't decorate your house unless Jane or her helper can help you. Don't buy a car without checking with Sam first. Don't sell a car or truck without checking with Sam first. Don't assume you can go to the funeral or a wedding of a family member without checking it out and or someone from the church going with you. Don't celebrate Christmas. Don't give gifts to others unless you are under authority. What the hell does that mean? Don't celebrate Easter. Don't celebrate other holidays. They just didn't even... <laughs> Don't eat turkey on Thanksgiving. Don't have bumper stickers on your car. Political season is an exception. Don't play games on your computer. Erase and delete the games. Don't own or use a Game Boy or other handheld electronic game devices. I can't play Tomodachi Life now. Don't play Monopoly. What happened? <laughs> to have to constitute half of these. Don't play or imitate an air guitar. Don't play music without singing the words. Don't let WAF children play with children outside of WAF. Don't let children make animal sounds. And then it says maybe. Don't let children play toy musical instruments. And then it also says maybe. So I guess maybe means that you gotta go ask Jane before you give little Tommy a xylophone. Don't forget to read your Bible before you go to bed. Don't let children play with camping toys. What does that even mean? mean. Don't let children play with play tools. Don't let children have Bibles with stories and pictures of Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm having to process this one. Isn't Jesus what the entire New Testament was about? Don't iron double creases in your pants. Don't start a relationship without checking it out with Jane. Don't decide who you will marry without checking it out with Jane. Don't talk to the other person who you are in a relationship with unless someone is listening and guarding the conversation. Don't talk loose and joke around. What are these people supposed to do all day? Don't complain about the list of don'ts. Don't place the toilet paper on the roll unless it rolls over the... Top. Don't go in the sanctuary with sin in your heart. Deal with it before sir. Don't expect someone else to clean up your mess. Please. Yes. 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 She'll drop like 55 rules of bullshit and then just say one that needs to be said. Don't expect someone else to clean up your mess. Don't talk back or give excuses for your sin. If you go to their website, they show pictures of this witch and that's exactly what she looks like. Now Sam looks like the sweetest man in the entire world. Oh no, here's a teenager who's having to suffer. Brock Webster, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Mm -hmm.